It's time for the one and only, the premier, the only official podcast of Pro Rodeo. Your suit bosses are ready, so let's give it a go and talk some rodeo. Hello, everyone, and welcome into another fun episode of the Shoot Bosses. We have coming your way here, the official podcast of Pro Rodeo. As always, Tanner Barth, Tracy Rink, and we got a bunch of great stuff. And we're going to sit down, Tracy, and actually talk with the number one ranked saddle bronc rider in the world, the Australian 2023 NFR qualifier, Damian Brennan. Yeah, I mean, he's just put all his talent together. He had a great NFR, and then everything's coming together, and he wins Fort Worth, he wins Houston. I mean, Houston's such a difference maker, winning over 50 grand, and he's got the talent now he's got the confidence yeah and it's going to be interesting and we chat with him a little bit you know i think he's out on the road right now but we'll ask him a little bit about what it was like coming from australia to the u.s was that always his plan so uh we'll, we'll get all of that that'll be coming your way in segment number three but as we always do tracy let's get this show started with our pro rodeo props and what a weekend it was this past weekend you know the weekend of uh october 12th i think Clayton Bigelow goes out on the road in California. He had had an okay season up to this point, hadn't had any huge wins, and he puts on a show out in California. Yeah, I mean, he wins Logandale, and then he won Oakdale, and yeah. he's got all that West. He's from California. He's a California yeah, goes, guy, 2019 yeah. world champ, and he just put everything together and won almost ten grand. And those are the kind of licks you need. If you miss the big ones, which most guys do, you need to start stacking up rodeos here and there, and... 10 grand in the spring is, is a big is a big push for sure and he's got the talent he put a, he finally put an NFR together similar to 19 last year because he hadn't really done much round wise since he won the world championship he won six rounds that one year and didn't have much to say for it after that Last year at the NFR, he was back to the Clayton Bigelow at old and looks like it's carried over. Yeah, no doubt about it. We mentioned that he went to uh, Logan, Nevada, Clark County Fair and Rodeo, won there, went across, back over to, to Oakdale, okay. got the win there. So he's on a roll. Those $9,000 earnings that he had bumps him inside the top 15. I think he sets number 10 as we talk here today, Tracy. And that bareback riding race, kind of wide open. You know, obviously guys up at the top, you know, that, that have had a really good season. Leighton Berry had a really good regular season last year. Keenan Hayes is still in the mix. A lot of things to shake out in the bareback riding as we start to get closer to those summer months. Yeah, guys like Rocker Steiner, Stein yeah. Rocker's one big race. It, it, it's all going to come down to how it shakes out towards the July that I see the Cowboy Christmas and then Calgary. Obviously, Calgary's going to shake up the standings because it pays so well. And can those guys stay healthy and get big wins? I mean, because as much as we like to say it, back in the day, if you won Calgary or Houston, you probably had a great shot of not only getting the NFR, winning the world title. Now the NFR is going to pay even bigger and better than ever. Now it's going to come down to, can I get there? How can I win the world at the NFR? Yeah, no doubt about it. Another guy that's been on a roll here to start 2024, none other than bull rider Clayton Sellers. He comes back to the association here in the PRCA, Tracy, in 2024. He came back at the tail end of 23 and had a ton of success. And now in 24, he's a man on a mission. Clayton Sellers just keeps picking up wins at the San Angelo Expos was his latest. Yeah, I mean, he's got all the talent in the world. He finished sixth, I believe, in 2021. He left the PRCA for a year. And last year, he probably makes the NFR if he just had enough rodeos. He honestly just ran out of time. He did, yeah. I mean, he started, he came back like in Cheyenne, and he just ran out of time. But with ground money counting and his ability, and he's got family involved with rodeo, and we know his backstory, but he's just a fantastic guy, and he's got capabilities. I mean, Stetson's opened the door for guys like that this year. Stetson, Kai, yeah. Stetson and Kai, but now with injuries for an extended period of time. Is it Clayton Sellers' year? Who, who knows? He's definitely got the ability to do it. Yeah, no doubt about that. He won that $15,000 down in San Angelo, bumped him up. He's still second in the PRCA Ram World standings. Right now, though, Tracy, everyone's chasing Creek Young. He's came out and had a great season as well, and he can kind of see that that opening in the window for a chance to, to, to win a world title. Well, he won the Fort Worth X Bulls. It got him a great boost, and then he, he wins Houston. Mm -hmm. I mean, Houston's you know almost won 60 grand there, and then all of a sudden you go from – being right in the mix of things to leading the world standings with over a hundred grand. And Creek's the biggest thing, and Creek said it himself, he's just found the consistency. He's always been a great rider. It's just some, some sometimes he gets in pockets where he doesn't ride consistently. Yeah, he well. goes on a cold streak. Yeah, and yeah. now like a lot of lot of bull riders do. And now he's he's found the consistency. And if he can keep that going, He's right there in the mix as well. Yeah, also in our short round segment here, how about this one? Legendary Nebraska volleyball head coach John Cook has named the Grand uh, Marshal 
of the Burwell Big Nebraska days, or the uh, Nebraska's Big Rodeo mm -hmm. in Burwell. Got that confused a little bit, but but cool for uh, for that rodeo to be able to honor a legendary coach, four-time national champion. Yeah, I mean, they cross over into other things. I know O'Berry, our Hall of Famer, was the Grand Marshal one year there, and Burwell just went in the Hall of Fame, I believe, two years ago. If yeah, I'm my thinking first right. year here. And Cooks, a legendary national championship coach that everybody in Nebraska knows. So, I mean, it's great. And, and they even spoke how he's he's really bought into the Western world of life, and he does team roping now. Really? On the side. Wow, so that's it's not, awesome. It's not like he's just... Hey, we want you to come to the rodeo and wave your, you know, wave hands and sh you know, kiss babies type deal. He's actually bought into the lifestyle, so it's a cool and that's what we like to see. Yeah, then there's the small towns, Tracy. You always get that that extra sense of community. Mm -hmm. But in Burwell, it's even bigger because you know they they claim it's uh, Nebraska's big rodeo. It really is. You yeah. know, this is it in the state of Nebraska as far as huge rodeo events go. And uh, they, they used to draw. I, I don't even remember how many people would take the train from Lincoln or Omaha yeah. out to Burwell for the rodeo. And they would draw, you know, 20, 30,000 people. Right. I mean, it like quadruples the size yeah. of the city. Burwell's I mean, not very big. I've driven through it a couple of times. <laughs> right. And, and it, so it's it's just, it's like a family reunion every year for guys. They come back and families. And it's just a great event. And obviously we recognize them by putting them in the Hall of Fame. And it's just fantastic when they can give back like this. Yeah, no doubt about it. So if you want to check that out, uh, that Nebraska's Big Rodeo in Burwell, July 24th to the 27th. That'll wrap us up for our short round, Tracy. We take a look now at our eight question segment. And uh, we're kind of getting on a trend here where we're bringing in newcomers. Yeah. You know, guys that are trying to climb their way up the world standings, make a name for themselves in Pro Rodeo. And this time we're going to sit down with 24-year-old bull rider Jake Lockwood. The last name, though, probably speaks for itself just a little bit in Rodeo. Well, obviously he's got family that won world titles in a different association, but Jake is what he's shown me this year is he's able to ride at big rodeos, he's able to start winning money, and he, the ability's there. Can he put it all together? And if there's ever a year for him to get to the NFR, it's a year like this year because, like we keep saying, guys have been injured. I mean, T. Parker's out. Kai Hamilton's been out. Stetson Wright's been out. Those are Josh two, Frost battled Josh, Josh Frost was out for a month and a half. Those are four out of 15 guys that went last year. So the door is open. Can Lockwood go through that, knock on that door, and walk through? Yeah, and that's a, that's a big thing You know, I was looking into, Tracy, as well. Is you look at that top 15 of the bull riders right now, six of the top 15 are guys that have never made an NFR. Obviously, we have still have a ton of rodeo season left to go. We've got the most important stretch coming up. But you know, right now, there's a lot of new faces trying to make their, make their presence felt. And it's good for the PRCA when you can is, you can get young infused new young blood or just infused new blood at the NFR because if you've missed the NFR for injury or for whatever reason, it makes you if you're a competitor at all you want to go back. So then it just makes the competition better as a whole. No doubt about it. Let's go to it. Here's our eight question segment with Jake Lockwood. Favorite movie. Uh, eight seconds. Favorite restaurant? Applebee's. Favorite bull you've ridden in the PRCA? Um, Silver Bullet. If you owned a bull, what would you name it? Oh, uh, Nightlife. What's your favorite hobby outside of rodeo? Ranching, cattle work. Describe bull riding in one word. Uh, exciting. Favorite ice cream? Uh, vanilla. So who would you choose as a tag team partner? Chuck Norris or Bruce Lee? Uh, gotta go with Chuck Norris. And Tracy, Jake, you can tell he's hungry himself. You know, he had some great things to say, some great answers to some of your questions. But he's hungry to, to get to the NFR and, you know, make a name known for himself. Yeah, as you say, I mean, obviously with the last name Lockwood, people are going to associate with him, his brother. And he wants to prove that not only can I, I'm sure he wants to prove, A, I can get to the NFR. Oh, and B, absolutely. I can win a world title of my own. Mm -hmm. And we should see because that's going to be an interesting bull riding race. If he can keep stacking up wins, he's got as good a shot as anybody with Creek Young leading the top of the pack right now. That's going to do it for our first segment here on The Shoe Bosses. Don't go anywhere. We'll have much more coming your way. We teased it off the top. We're going to sit down and talk with Damian Brennan. That'll be in segment number two, and we'll also have our Pro Radio Hall of Fame spotlight. And Buck will make yet another appearance from the Hall of Fame. Don't go anywhere. We're back with much more right after this.
Horses are one of nature's greatest gifts, which is why they deserve the very best that nature has to offer. Since we've started using hemp flavor, our horses are calmer, more willing, more athletic. In the daily pellet, they eat it in their feed. My horses are picky. For them to eat it says something. The stuff's really just been lightning in the bottle. Equine Hemp Solutions, we support your horse so you can support your lifestyle. Proud supporter of your Western Sports Association. Go to the Equine Solutions website below and use Cowboy 10 and receive 10% off your order. Hello everyone, welcome back into the Shoot Bosses. Tanner and Tracy here. We'll have Damian Brennan coming your way, so make sure you, you stick with us as we catch up with him out on the Rodeo Road. And Tracy, we're going to get things kicked off, as we always do, segment number two, our Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame Spotlight. And this is a name that, that's known to a lot of people. You know, I just know, you know, not only from the movie career, but also just a word, hey, we got Slim Pickens out here. We're talking about 1979 or 2005, excuse me, Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame inductee Slim Pickens. Yeah, I mean, he had a legendary career. He was a, you know, clown, funny man, did all did rodeo back in the day. I mean, his time is way back in the day, but he obviously made a name for himself that everybody knows. If you say Slim Pickens, most people know what you're talking about, whether it was meant to be that way or not. Yeah, here's a good story for you. I have this one written down, so I want to make sure I read it off right here. He began entering rodeos at age 14. His father didn't like it. His dad was like, no, I don't want you entering rodeos. So what he did to hide his rodeo life, he started entering rodeos under a different name each week, starting at age 14. That's That's insane. That's that's creative. (laughs) I mean, that tells you how much of a deep dive you want to make to be part of the rodeo world. Yeah, he began in the CTA. I think that was the the Cowboys Turtle Association. Mm -hmm. He was a rough stock contestant. But then one day, Tracy, the clown didn't show up. Yeah. And there goes Slim Pickens into the arena, and from that point on, you know, he started to become a rodeo clown and kind of fell in love with it, it sounded like. You always hear those stories. I, I just don't want to be the clown that didn't show up, because how many guys' career? Yeah. It's like Lou Gehrig. You no longer got the yeah, gig yeah, after someone, that. He got sick, and Lou Gehrig went in the lineup, and then like 2,000 games later, he never came out. So great great for Slim Pickens, and he's a funny man. I mean, obviously he made his mark in the PRCA, well, obviously way pre, pre way before the PRCA, yeah. mm-hmm. left his mark in the rodeo world. And the guy was also an actor. Did you know yeah, that? Yeah, well, that's how I think the Slim Pickens thing came about because yeah. he was so popular as an actor. Yeah, he started his acting career in the 1950s, his first gig there. 150 movies and TV shows later, Tracy. Uh, you know, that just shows that if you have a good personality, you're going to find you. You're going to have some stardom to your to your name. Well, especially back then, they're always looking for funny men, always yeah. looking for something different, and they kind of offered that. And it was something that... They didn't have to train a guy to do it. That's what he did professionally anyway. And like, let's bring the goofy guy yeah, on. Yeah, and that's what, he, that's what yeah. he did. And, I mean, they used to have shows like that all the time in movies that just had the, the random guy show up or whatever it may be. But he was so funny, people wanted him in movies. Yeah, so there's your Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame Spotlight 2005 Hall of Fame inductee Slim Pickens. It's time for our Did You Know segment, Tracy. I'm just going to ask you, oh, you can't glance down at the cheat sheet here. Can't, can't, can't when was see. the first uh, all-around uh, world champion? Well, I do know this without glancing down because I, I go through media guides all the time. You do. 1929. What's the I, guy's name? Earl Thode. Oh, there you go. Nice. You had to dig deep for I, that I one. I was thinking about this, but yeah, I mean, it's crazy how long our association. Crazy, yeah. I mean, we're almost 100 years removed from that. That's yeah. how crazy that is and that we have rec- records documented. It's even cooler. Yeah, and uh, Thode won that world championship 1929. He was became the uh, first official cowboy to be recognized as a world champion all-around guy. That same year, he also won a saddle bronc riding world championship. And Tracy, he was one of the first ones that kind of set the, the tone or the stage for the full stroke spurring that we see now that's kind of required of saddle bronc riders and it just shows that you know there's so much history and so much lineage in rodeo yeah i mean imagine that you know in the 20s and 30s doing that and it's like what is he doing with his feet and it's still present today like it's just it's almost mind-boggling to me yeah, and he was inducted into that first Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame class in 1979. So it just shows that, uh, you know, his legacy definitely impacted rodeo, and he's known as one of the, the best in the forefronts of saddle bronc riding. So it's great to, to be able to sit down and, and chat a little bit about one of the, the all-time greats. Our viewer question here, Tracy, Stephen on Facebook wants to know, what is a turnout when it comes to rodeo? We know that you can have a good turnout, 
or you can have a bad turnout. That's a notified turnout and a non-notified turnout. You just want to kind of explain what that is. A I'll bit. let you explain this. Okay. That's you, you're, that's your technical side of that. <laughs> I don't want to go deep dive into this. I understand what it is, but I'll let you explain it. Yeah. So basically, what it is, you know, Cowboys have an opportunity that if you know for some reason they have schedule conflicts mm -hmm. or. You know, in some cases, they have a stock draw that they don't think is favorable for them and they want to go off to another rodeo. They can turn out of that position, right. which basically means they notify the committee or the rodeo secretary that, hey, I'm not going to be competing. Right. You know, and, and we mentioned uh, the good and the bad. So you have your notified turnouts where you call and you let them right. know, hey, I'm not going to be able to be there. Or you have your non-notified turnouts where you just don't show up to the rodeo and then you're probably going to have one of rodeo administration knocking on your door uh, with the rodeo fine, if I had to guess. Yeah, I mean, it, it's at that point, they've got everything lined yeah. out, the stock's lined out. you can't get out, another contestant. And you can't get a contestant because if you notify out and you let them know, they can bring someone else yeah, in. Yeah, have a replacement. And, and so they can keep filling the show, so to speak. If you non-notify out, then there's empty empty saddles or empty whatever it may be. So that that's obviously not a good thing. Yeah, and we obviously have to, to mention that there's a difference between a non-notified or a notified turnout, but then also a doctor releasing out. Right. Because that's when you have an injury and you can get a doctor's note and say, hey, you know, Tracy Rink's not going to be able to get on his bull tonight, so he, he won't be riding. So there, there's definitely a difference there. But, uh, yeah, that's a good question because it, it, not a lot of people even know that there's such thing as turnouts. They just assume everyone's going to be there and they're going to be competing, but it happens pretty often in rodeo. Yeah, and you speak. I had another question I want to answer. The okay. Shoot Shoot Bosses Nation answers, yes, I was a lounge singer back in the day. What, uh, what bar? A bar, uh, Pixie's Bar. Pixie's Bar. And I'll give you a quick, quick segment. Love on the rocks. Ain't no big surprise. Pour me a drink and I'll tell you some lies. Thank you, Neil Diamond. That got me a free drink or two. You tell me lies every single day. Yeah. Another lie. guy that's good at lies, uh, it's Buck. He's down in the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame, Tracy. And, you know, he last episode, I don't even remember what he was doing, but he was out with his eclipse glasses and looking up at the he sun. He almost went blind. Yeah, he's looked, he at, looked the, up at the sun with no glasses, which he thought was the correct thing to do. His cornea got scratched and damaged, but so he put on the glasses. Then it was pure black. And he's a bowl. He's a bowling champion. I think yeah. he said he no, finished had the, eight out of eight for eight, Biggest eight, Loser Youth Championship. Yeah, he was he was eighth place in a seven man league. So that's all right. He so, tried. He so, tries. Yeah, someday they're gonna catch up with Buck. He's got your priority over the day. I'm Buck, official correspondent of the Shoot Bosses. My word for the day is escape. As in rough stock riders escape danger every day when they compete at rodeos. Who's the refrigerator behind me when Buck's thirsty? Time to get a drink. Ooh, Buck, what are you doing in here? Oh my gosh, boys and girls, that reminds me of Buck's version of escape. I owe my landlord some back rent. I gotta get out of here. Cowboying is in our blood. Cowboying is in our bruises. It's in our rain-soaked jackets. In our calloused hands, tested by barbed wire and rope. Our mud-stained boots to the crown of our resist-all hat. You live out west for even the shortest time, and there's one thing you learn. You can't pretend out here. Resist-all. We live it every day. Welcome back into the Shoot Bosses podcast, the official podcast of Pro Rodeo. Tracy, we talked about it off the top of the show. We're going to sit down with one of the hottest saddle bronc riders in the world. You know, right now it's the Australian, Damian Brennan. He's coming off of a couple of huge wins, and he sets number one. And I can't wait just to, to talk to him a little bit about rodeo, about Australia, you know, and just catch up with him a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he made his NFR debut last year and had a great NFR, and it just propelled into this season and wins Houston, and he's starting to put everything together. The talent's there. Now he's putting it all together, and it shows in the world standage. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And Damien's jumping on with us now. You're in a sweet ride, Damien. I see you behind the wheel. Uh, we're glad you're stopped, though. First of all, just take us through, man, what this year has been like for you in 2024. You come out, you get a couple of huge wins, $130,000 earned. Did you ever imagine that you'd have this start to the year that you've had so far? Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. And, yeah, it's been an incredible start, um, you know, my goals this year were to try and win some big major rodeos like to Houston, Calgary and Fort Worth and et cetera. And to jump out there and win two of the biggest rodeos straight up Fort Worth and Houston. It's been 
been pretty incredible. So, yeah, we just try and keep that ball rolling and yeah, let it keep happening, hopefully. How much did you learn from the NFR last year? Obviously, you made your debut. You had a great NFR. You won rounds and won a lot of money. How much did that help you rolling into this season in 24? Yeah, it's been a massive help. It, uh, you know, it's a, it was a big confidence booster having a good NFR. You're there riding against the best in the world. And to just really prove to yourself that you can mix it with them and, yeah, that you belong. You belong there, I suppose. And they like to say in saddle bronc riding that it's the Canadians that's taken over, but obviously the Australians at the top of things right now, Damien, you know, what's it like representing your country and coming from Australia over here to, to chase that dream of being a world champion? Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. There's been quite a few Aussies before me to come over and do it too. But um, yeah, to kind of join that join that legacy of guys, it's pretty cool and it's it's a it's a big move for an Australian, you know, coming from Australia, moving over here away from family away from everything you know and you kind of got to start a new life for yourself and you got to yeah sac- you got to sacrifice quite a bit to be able to do it but um yeah I wouldn't change it for the world it's been awesome I've met so many good people and made so many good friends so yeah it's it's been a pretty good journey and pretty excited to keep it going so we talked in the past obviously Kai Hamilton being from Australia wins the world championship last year he'd mentioned how much kind of Dave Appleton it, it been there maybe as a shoulder for him, as a guy you can count on. Have you been in conversations with Dave at all, the Hall of Famer? Yes. No, I've got to meet Dave uh, two years ago, and he's been great. He always sends me the odd text here and there and tells me to either a good job or if I don't do any good, tells me to keep my head up and keep going. So, yeah, them kind of guys are yeah, really, really good for us fellas like myself and Kai that have been there and done it before. What was it like watching, you know, Kai win that world championship? Obviously, you wish you would have won a world title as well, but you had a great NFR. What was that like? You know, I know you guys both, uh, you know, have some pride. Oh, it was amazing. I had I had butterflies in my belly for him. It was so cool. I, I helped him on every ball every night. And to kind of the NFR Kai had too, as you guys know, he got knocked out. No one really knew whether he was going to get back on, but he's as cowboy as they come, Kai. You, you're not going to hold him down. So, yeah, to see him. To see him do that and get get the world one, like, yeah, it was incredible. It was great watching. How often do you get back to Australia now that you're over here? I know that rodeo season keeps you pretty busy. Yeah, normally I get back right after the season's done, after September, and then get back two or three weeks before the NFR and get get on some practice horses and then normally go back again for Christmas. I, I love home and I try and get back every chance I get. So we we had some research we did how come the bugs are so big in australia is that just an australia thing <laughs> i don't know it must be an australian thing yeah. yeah you talked a little bit about going back to australia and having a chance to, to you know be around the rodeo scene that's there uh you mentioned uh, that you and jake finley were having an opportunity to maybe get a uh, an international bronc riding match the australian open going on take us through that a little bit and why you guys decided that would be something you'd like to do Yep. No, we've been in Salsa. We've been brewing up this idea. And I feel like while we're in this seat now, that we there's so many Australians coming over to America and the Cowboy Channel that Australia, it's a big following. Rodeo now, it's getting huge. And I feel like if we could get the best guys in the world to come home and show them our country and then put on a cool bronc match with a lot of prize money, it's going to, for one, grow the sport in Australia and all these Americans talk about they want to go catch an alligator, so they may as well come on and we'll take them. But no, it, it'll be an awesome event. We're going to try and get some good prize money up. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be great for, for Australia and rodeo. Is this always the dream you had? I mean, obviously, a lot of guys grow up in America and want to be cowboys. It's a little easier because they're in America with the PRCA. Is this something you envisioned yourself to make it to the PRCA and that now being one of the world's best? Yes, no. When I was a young kid, not so. I was pretty crazy on my rugby back in the day. Played a lot, a lot of rugby straight out of school. Went and played rugby, and um, I don't know. The city life wasn't for me. I went straight north and just working on big cattle stations, and found myself an old beat up Bronx cattle and started getting on a few. And uh, yeah, it was it was a weird deal. Lockie Shepherd was one of my buddies here at uh, Western Texas College there in Snyder, and got me under the coaching. I got a full scholarship to go to college there lost Damien there we'll see if he can jump back on with us here on the shoe bosses but he was just talking about you know it wasn't really his dream when he started things off to that he was going to be a saddle bronc rider in the U.S. you know he tried rugby a little bit and that kind of 
you know, threw him a, threw a wrench in some of his plans, and then he went out to a cattle ranch, found a saddle, and the rest is history. He's one of the best in the world. Yeah, and what a lot of those guys, even Kai, I know they get scholarships to come to college, and if that's their dream, I mean, you can go to you know junior college or whatever it may be, and then that's just a that's a trampoline to get to the PRCA if you're good enough. I mean, Kai, I know initially went to Odessa, he was tied in there, and then he obviously went to bigger and better things and same with Damien you go to those colleges you learn the like the lay of the land and then you meet up with the right guys then all of a sudden you're traveling down the road and you got a chance to make the NFR and you know we mentioned the, we've talked about this so many times Tracy but anytime you can find a way to win one of those big rodeos you know whether it's a rodeo like Houston like San Antonio like Fort Worth you know he captured two out of those big three winter rodeos and that really prepares, propels you into, into doing really, really great things. And he's got as good a shot as anybody this year to win a gold buckle. Obviously, though, it's going to come down to Las Vegas. Yeah, it'll come down to Las Vegas because there's so, many, so much money involved. But when you win rodeos like that, the first thing it does is almost 99% assures you to go to the NFR. Because you're going to, I mean, most guys get their 100,000 kind of the benchmark a little over. He's going to make the NFR. Now you want to stay healthy. Uh, and then you move on from there, but then it becomes the gold buckle dream, like Riley Webb. Riley Webb did the same thing last year. He wins Houston. He had a huge lead. He sets the all-time record, season's record, but he had to have a great NFR. And as I speak of great NFR, it looks like we're joined back by Damian Brennan. Yeah, Damian's there right now. And Damian, uh, sorry about that, man, but we're glad to have you back. Oh, I don't know if we have any audio for you, Damian. looks like your mic might be off. Uh, got me yeah, there. There we go. We're yeah, back. we're back. Yeah, we're back. Sorry, guys, my phone, buddy. Yeah, I don't know what it's doing. Yeah, so we were uh, we were just kind of talking about the impact that uh, you know rodeos had and what it was like for you in Australia trying to get to the U.S. and become a saddle bronc rider. Yep. So yeah, I think I left there. Um, got a scholarship to come to Snyder, and that kind of one thing led to another. I just yeah, really really enjoyed bronc riding, and it kind of come easy to me, I suppose. I had to work at it too. Don't worry, but. Um, yeah, it was kind of just a bit of natural talent there, maybe. And, uh, yeah, just started working at it and then did my rookie year and won the rookie year and then won the college finals and got to the NFR. And, yeah, here we are. It's crazy, the journey it's been. What's it going to take, Damien, to find a way to win a world title? We'll have a couple more questions and we'll let you go. Um, I think you got to have a good, solid year. Obviously, keeping healthy is the biggest thing. Try and keep healthy all year and – just capitalize on every opportunity you get. When when you get a good horse, you've got to capitalize. So I think if we can do that all year long and go to the NFR, hopefully go to the NFR, lead in the world. And yeah, anything can happen there though. Just hopefully you get good draws and it all, it all pans out. Well, man, we really appreciate you joining us here on the Shoot Bosses podcast. We know you're busy. Sorry for the technical difficulty, but we wish you the best of luck, man. And hopefully we'll get a chance to, to see you down the road. Yep. Thanks for having me on, guys. There it is, appreciate Damian it. Brennan. We really appreciate his time, Tracy, and you know, just a chance to sit down and talk with him and a great dude. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously he's a great young competitor in the saddle bronc, and he's got things going, and he's got a chance at a gold buckle. Yep, and just a reminder, this will be our last episode. We're going to take a week break, but then we'll be back after San Angelo. We'll get you kicked off around the 1st of March. And don't go anywhere, though, because we have much more coming your way on the Shoe Bosses. <laughs>